Alright, welcome back to another Kuma Style Review. I'm TJ Duckett, and what we have here today is Fans Projects Function X uh, number one code. So, just taking a look at the box here, it's still in the plastic actually, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off so you guys can see without having anything in the way. Alright, and it does come with another outer layer of plastic. See, it's actually separate from the box. Um, grid design, Function X, a cool FX, which blends into the graph type. All right, Function X1, code, big huge letters on one side. On the other, this is awesome, just kind of a inverse drawing of um, Chrome Dome, or code, their name for them. All right, copyright information, actually in Eng English and everything like that. Um, nice line drawing. I don't know if that's just cell art from the CAD model, but looks good. Nice little side view of one half of, or front view of one half of Chrome Dome face. On the bottom, nada. Top, nada. Let's open this guy up. Alright, now, taking a look at the figure itself here. Pretty strong likeness to the G1 Chrome Dome toy. Um, I like that in hand, his head doesn't come off or as big as it does in pictures that we've previously seen and things like that. He does have his two sniper rifles. Love the paint job on those. Um, the red with the white highlights. Okay. So, taking a look at the figure itself, just so you guys can get more all-around view. Okay. Nice detailing and stuff like that. I love that it's pretty much the updated version of the G1 toy, rather than having this sharp anime over aesthetic and things like that. It, it's nice. It's actually pretty refreshing. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at his height. Alright. He stands too, and I actually have to look through the camera to see this. Approximately six inches on the dot. So let's take a look at him in comparison to some other figures here. Um, I'm assuming most people collect Fans Project toys, but a steel core and an assaulter, he actually scales pretty well with. I, I like it quite a bit. Surprisingly, I enjoy the more deluxe style better than I would have, um, you know, a Voyager or Ultra, that kind of thing, because realistically, that'd be way too big for Chrome Dome. So let's go ahead and take a look at the head here. I know that was a concern with quite a few members, how that looked. And there we go. Make sure to focus correctly. And let me get some good light on there so you can see. All right, and the paint job is well done here in hand. Um, I know some of the pre-release um, pictures made it look a bit blotchy. Um, didn't really highlight the details and things like that. But, you know, the little lines and things like that. Um, the paint job being, you know, in the lines and that kind of stuff. The eyes well done and even. No, like, cockeyed look to them or anything like that. It looks good. It looks good. So, okay. Alright. Now, let's take a look at the posability of this figure. Head to toe. Alright, so, the head turns on a swivel here. So, the head itself doesn't swivel, but there's an actual circle here. Let me zoom into that. That swivels around itself. Okay. The head does have the ability to look downwards. They added that joint. It can't look upwards, though. Um, Alright, so that's the head, neck area. Shoulders are on ball joints, but because of these pieces right here, they can't really go up too far. So, simulate that, you know, you kind of have to move his arm up rather than out, but he can't get that whole, like, wingspan look. 
He does have bicep swivel, nice tight joints too, um, screws, and looking at the elbow joint here, goes up quite a bit. All right, I like that a lot. All right, now his wrist, doo -doo -doo. all right, it can move up and down. It also has swivel, so he has full articulation in the wrist joint. You can't just wiggle him like in and out and things like that. It doesn't have a swing. His waist definitely has swivel, which is awesome. Thighs are on ball joints, but again, like the shoulders, for whatever reason, they're a bit limited. Um, they actually have a top up here so he can't do like outward swing he can't wingspan with his feet either so that's kind of unfortunate not gonna lie um thigh swivel for sure double jointed knees full bend at the knees there in fact okay if you want to do a kneeling pose all right now the feet are what they are um they go forward and backwards but they don't have um, rocker ankles that can swing in and out to give him more, you know, stability on the ground. He still holds up pretty solid because the feet are well designed. Um, good ratio to foot, ankle, things like that. Um, but he just can't stand flat footed when you um, put him like this. But let's take a look at him with his guns. All right. Standard 5mm hand weapons, which I always love. But taking a look at that. See, and this is where I wish his arms could go a little bit more out. Because it'd be nice to, you know, have him blast the camera more that way. But, you know, it is what it is. And boom, there's that. And all right, um, Chrome Dome, even though he's, it's not really recognized in the more than the eye, like the IDW ongoings and things like that, he was originally a headmaster character, meaning that this was essentially a body controlled by another being who formed the head. So let's go ahead and pop this out because this one actually does recognize the headmaster lineage. All right, so to transform this, we're just popping this out like so. Alright, these legs here, we're just swinging them back, swinging everything back, and as you put his waist down, this guard comes out to shield the eye so you don't see that, but, alright, here's the headmaster. Okay, let's go ahead and angle the camera down so you can actually see him. But yeah, I mean, he... Is very much so an is what it is character. Size wise, he's not even an inch. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just a small little guy. We're not looking at articulations in the elbows. Um, he does have the ability to bend the size in, you know, leg articulation there. Doesn't have ball joints, so can't swing in and out. Um, no head movement. And, yeah, that's sad that, you know, he kind of is what he is. That is his headmaster. Let's take a look at him from all sides here. Oops. Okay. And back to the front. Okay, and there you go. There's the headmaster. Now let's go ahead and get this guy transformed into his car mode and check it out. Alright, and now that we've taken a look at um, his robot mode, as well as the headmaster, let's go ahead and get this thing transformed. It's a pretty straightforward transformation, so um, I'm actually going to enjoy going through this with you guys. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, I just took the headmaster. He's going to stay um, untransformed, and I got one of my lights just blew out. Shit. Um, he's going to stay transformed. I just put him off to the side. Alright, so what we're going to do, we take his guns, out of his hands there, it's a tight grip, okay, 
Now, on the back of his arms here, you're going to see two peg holes, and they just peg in. Really that simple. Okay, so that's step one. Alright, now on the front side, this whole crotch piece right there just flips down. From there, we can take this whole front plate and make sure this is in front with this gap here because we take this whole front plate and we slide it all the way down. It actually slides through that crotch plate. So let me finish sliding it. There we go. And see? Now it's connected at where the crotch plate was. Alright? And from there we're looking at the back now. So this back cab, just take that, flip it up, and that gives us the ability to flip his arms out like so. Okay? Now that we've got his arms flipped out, we can do that, use that extended, hyperextended elbow joint and get things flipped up like so. Okay? Now we're just going to turn the hands inwards, flip it up like so. See that? Hand inward, and then just tilt it back, and this little flap goes down. Alright? There are two flaps or two clips right here right here and boom those will just clip together and don't worry if they don't necessarily stay too well by the time you have it transformed they'll be locked into place alright now we have his feet All right, his feet these are flaps that flip up on each side flip these flaps up All right. And we take the whole thing and turn it around. That whole like flap and foot piece. Just swivel them both around. And now, I have to make sure that's right way up. We just make them flat. Make them flat like so. Okay? Now we take this whole inner thigh piece. We turn it inwards like so. And you'll see the brown side up on the thigh. Wheels facing inwards. Same with this side. And now what we do is... Flip the whole waist around, and for whatever reason, the instructions don't tell you to do this part, but you have to flip the whole waist around here, okay, so you have something like so, and then these back parts actually just flip up, and you'll see two pegs here, one, two, and that's where the bottom side pegs in, bottom side pegs in, alright, and now this top hood, I can just fold that out. And there are two, it's hard to see, but there are two pegs here in the thigh, under there, that this just pegs into. So, once you get that pegged in, boom, boom, you got yourself a car. Alright, and we can just flip the cockpit down, angle these guns up, and yeah, we're rolling, let's zoom in on that guy a little bit. Okay. And now to get into the car mode itself. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so taking a look at the car mode here. Really straightforward, really cool. Let me zoom in and actually get some focus there. Okay. What you guys see from all views all right now one nice feature is the fact that this all can come up here and let me actually angle the camera down some all right it has a full-on cockpit no seat but an actual you know handles and everything like that to the car so what we can do is bring those up and our headmaster here, we can get them into that sitting mode that we looked at when we went over its posability. And it pegs in, actually. Okay. And we can put that back down. Alright. So you can raise his hands to, you know, pretend to touch the handlebars. He doesn't have grips on his hand or anything like that. So it would be more emulated than anything else. But I'm going to go ahead and close that. Just to show that it still closes all the way and everything. 
Okay, and zooming out. Boom, there is Chrome Dome's alt mode. This is really nice, a really cool, cohesive alt mode and everything like that. And I love the more Cybertronian styled, old school G1 vibe to this. I really do. Like, this is one of the alt modes that I would personally display because I'm more into mecha than realistic cars and, you know, that kind of thing. But, yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's got the double blasters here that you can angle however you want. Actually, put those forward. It's just really cool, really creative, and good engineering behind it. And kudos to fans project. All right? All right. And there is his vehicle mode. All right, so final thoughts on this figure. Pleasantly, 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 pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, there was a lot of riffraff on the message boards and things like that about this one being designed by a different designer. And to me, that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, this is a fan's project toy. And personally, I feel like you just see a lot of businesses in general trying to put off fan complaints on, oh, we got this new hire, or oh, we got this new designer, et cetera, et cetera. You know, if something was wrong with Windows, oh, okay, well, this new development team did blah, blah, blah. But if people love that same aspect about Windows or something like that, oh, well, Microsoft has been working. You never hear those separate designers mentioned when something goes well or is really appraised. So why do they come up when, I guess there are complaints. So to me, this is a fans project toy. Um, they were the ones that approved it, gave it the go ahead, put forth the manufacturing efforts and things like that. And obviously they thought that it was okay. And personally, I love this thing. I am very, very, very impressed. Um, Another thing that was impressive about this is the fact that whether you ordered it through Big Bad Toy Store, Ages 3 and up, um, you know, TF Source, of course, um, part of the money that you paid for this with went towards charity, whether it was Toys for Tots, Salvation Army, etc., etc. So you're not only getting a really nice toy, but you did something this holiday season to donate to a great cause. So kudos to everybody who contributed to that. Um, props to everybody who's able to enjoy this toy. And even for you guys who didn't um, get the initial batch, donate, etc, etc. It's still one that I recommend because like I said, it's a cool toy. So buy this one while you can. I actually appreciate the fact that it doesn't have that overly manga aesthetic and things like that that a lot of fans project toys do because it shows the versatility of the company. You know, between doing their own characters now, um, completely different aesthetics and things like that. Characters from, you know, complete characters, combiners, etc., etc., to headmasters, to upgrade kits for existing Hasbro Takara characters. I mean, this company's really expanding to the point where they're, they're a force. There's not one thing that this party really hasn't tackled yet. Um... And this just goes to show that the things that they are tackle, tackling, and when they do go into new areas, they make sure to do it well. This is an awesome, awesome toy, awesome aesthetic. Um, I've seen people, you know, some of the pictures from those overseas who have already gotten them. They've painted the face gray and things like that. I'm keeping this thing just as it is. It looks fucking sweet. I love this toy. So anyway, I do wish that it had some more um, shoulder articulation in terms of being able to wingspan up, but at the same time, I'm all right. I'm still gonna enjoy the hell out of this one. But anyways, this has been another Kuma style review, looking over what we've covered. We've went over the robot mode, we've transformed it, we've looked at the vehicle mode, the headmaster, and yeah, we've even talked about some of the modifications that people have done. But anyways, if you guys have any questions or concerns, by all means, hit me up here on YouTube, my site, kumastyle.com, Twitter, Kumasal GFX, it doesn't matter. Let me know what you guys think of this character too. And of course, check out the full written and pictorial review that's going up today as well on Kumasal.com. This has been TJ Duckett and see you next review.